Lane Smith, congratulations. You made it through a really brutal round of testing. And now here you are, that much closer to being Forged and Fire champions. Well, now we're sending you back to your home for just to recreate this iconic weapon. You ready to see what it is? Oh, yeah. yeah. The Nine Ring Broadsword. Good luck, Bladesmiths. We'll see you in four days. Thank you. Good luck. It's day one here at the Home Forge. I don't really have much experience making something this big or this wide. <laughs> Plan for today is I got to get the end of the sword drawn out quite a ways. I'm going to use 1080 steel. Nice big heavy bar of it. 1080, nice hard steel that's forgiving for heat treating in an open forge. Let her start warming up. I'm doing most of the work on the press. My plan is just to kind of get it worked out a little bit here. Just trying to break that down and spread it out. Heat her back up. Has to be a minimum of two and a half, four inches from the tip, so I'm gonna go for three. That way I got a little bit of movement to do any tweaks I need to after heat treat. Yeah. I'm halfway there, maybe. Yeah, tip's coming right in there now. Starting to take shape of a sword. That's it for day one. We are my home forge. I start forging the blade today, and I'm looking to have it fully forged, hopefully midday tomorrow, to where I can start doing some grinding. My biggest concern with this blade is heat treat. I would really, really hate to have to start over again at the end of day two. I've got a lot of meat in this thing that needs to be thinned out. Fortunately, I have a power hammer that's going to help a lot with making that happen. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. All of a sudden, my power hammer decides it doesn't want to play anymore. It stops working. That sucks. So in between heats, now I'm trying to rewire my power hammer. All right, well, that ain't working. Finally get the switch back together. Ta-da! It's alive! So I'm working on the blade and drawing it out, and I notice there's a crack in the blade. And there's no save in this. Yeah, that's junk. So on my backup steel is 01. It is a tool steel, but it's not a good steel for swords. Hopefully I can temper it right, and it'll still hold together through the testing. Day two for me today. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of this 316th rod and a little scroll and jig and try to set up some like inch and a half rings. I'm gonna hot cut them off one at a time. Once they get attached on the sword, then I'll probably just give them a little TIG weld to hold them together on there. I'm getting ready to try to drill the holes for the rings. It could have possibly got too hard in the forging. Find out here in a second. Looks like it's drilling like butter. First two holes drilled, just fine. That's harder. Uh, I was hoping they would drill easy. That's what I was afraid of. It can't be a nine ring sword without nine holes for the rings to go in. Feeling the clock now. Mm. It's not soft. I'm gonna heat the spine of it up with a torch and try to just draw it back and hopefully it'll be soft enough that I can get those last seven holes punched through it. If this doesn't work, I'm screwed. I'd hate to start forging again. Still a heck of a lot of work to do. So it's critical that I really hit the heat treat tonight. If it breaks, if it cracks, if it does anything other than quenches hard and straight, I'm done. I have no backups anymore. We've got a hard blade, it's straight. So as I start profiling the blade more, all of a sudden I notice something's gone wrong. Again, got a crack in the blade. I have no more steel to work with. All right, so how do I fix that? I decided to just put scallops in between all of the eyelets for the rings and hopefully grind far enough down to where I'm beyond where the crack is. No more crack. Doesn't look like the picture, but I kind of like it, to tell you the truth. Got some sweet tay. Day four, finally punched through the last hole, so now we got a nine-hole broadsword. Got the sword quenched yesterday, but I'm still under the gun time to get all these rings welded on here. That's right. They're on there. I'm going to use a camo colored paracord to do the wrap. And it gives enough grip and thickness to the handle. <laughs> Things beastly. I'm finished. It's sharp. It's an instrument of death. It's a wild thing. That thing looks wicked. 
First thing I'm getting after is the rings. I'm going with eighth inch mild steel. I created a jig a while back for bending this kind of stuff. You know, gonna put it in the jig, bend them around until they're pretty symmetrical and pretty even. Yeah, not too bad. So all I have left to do is get these rings welded in place. Boy, that looks like It just doesn't want to weld together very well. I mean, it starts to melt, it starts to do other things. Damn it. But finally, blade's finished. Nine ring broadsword, brother. I love this thing. I'd like to keep it put on my wall, but I'd rather have 10 grand. Bladesmiths, you have our gratitude. Gentlemen, your swords look magnificent, but are they deadly? To find that out, we will take your swords and deliver some killing blows on this pig carcass. It's all about the kill in this particular test. Burton, you are first. Are you ready, sir? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Pretty much what could go wrong is the blade breaks or it's not sharp enough to cut what it's supposed to cut. Let's see how it holds up. Right, Burton, first up, what I love about this blade was the balance, the way I was able to move with the blade everywhere. Now let's talk about the breakage. Okay, so the break happened right there where the ring was attached. You can see it's really not a bad core scrutcher you have there. It could be finer, but rings, when you're digging into that, could cause stress risers, and it broke right there where the ring was. Well, gentlemen, the fight's not over because, Mike, your blade still has to survive nine strikes on its kill test target. Good luck, gentlemen. Doug? Burton's blade broke right at one of the holes. I have them same holes in there. Plus, on my spine, I've already had two cracks. I'm terrified it's going to break. Oh, it's, uh, the heart's starting to flutter a little bit. Burton, unfortunately, your blade broke and can no longer continue with testing. And for that reason, I have to dismiss you from the forge. Dude, good job, brother. I appreciate it. Man. Sucks. Damn, man. Gorgeous weapon. Oh, thank you, man. Seeing my blade break, uh, it's a disappointment. You know, when you make it to round three, you want to win. You know, the nine holes burnt through four drill bits doing them. So somewhere through there, I probably was given a little too much pressure and caused the stress riser to run down that blade. That was enough to cause a critical failure in that blade. I'm still proud of myself with what I've done. You know, it was uh, way out of my wheelhouse. Uh, what's next for me is not swords, especially any nine ring swords. <laughs> That's for damn sure. Mike, congratulations. The strength and integrity of your blade has made you a Forged in Fire champion, and that's a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, brother. I won Forged in Fire. Holy crap, man. Come on forward and shake our hands, my thank, friend. Thank you. Good job, brother. Thank you. With some of the things that went wrong in my home forge, I was really sure that that blade was going to break on me. Yeah, it did. It was a happy dance. Enjoy the day.